At that time, the King of England saw clearly that his coinage was being rendered worthless by excessive clipping on the part of Jews in England, who at the Parliament of 1275 had been forbidden to lend money at interest, to such an extent that it was not reaching half its due weight. Edward I, who was aware that foreign merchants were visiting England with their goods less frequently than usual on account of the debasement of the coin, and that goods of all kind were very and vastly more expensive, in order to make good the loss to his kingdom, Edward I took the wise advice of noblemen and counsellors, and telling few people in advance decreed that the perfidious Jews who were clipping coins be arrested in all the cities and boroughs of England. The king had them put in custody and shackled them. And when all the wealth that had been acquired illegally had been transferred without appeal to the royal treasury, he ordered they be detained further for punishment, since it was quite evident that such a crime could not have been committed without the complicity of Christians after a short time, King Edward I arrested with almost unbelievable speed and surprise all the goldsmiths in the kingdom and several other individuals who, as a result of the accusations of, accusations of Jews or of some other likely conjecture, came under suspicion of being partners or accomplices of the clippers or purchasers. After Christmas, the king appointed wise and prudent men in his kingdom as justices, and the creed that they should interrogate the Jews and Christians about the coin clipping so that the guilty would be punished and the innocent set free. The justices condemned to be hanged very many Jews who had been convicted of clipping. They similarly sentenced some Christians, albeit few, who had committed the same crime or who were accomplices. After sworn inquests had been held with local juries, the goldsmiths and almost all other suspects escaped the death penalty, rightly or wrongly, I know not.